Looking at other PolyLearn courses, again, let's look at this Food Science and Nutrition from Arlene. Um, you can also embed YouTube videos into your PolyLearn course. Um, so this YouTube video here was embedded into the edit summary, um, so it displays right on the page. Um, but if you have a lot of videos, I would recommend that you don't put them all on um, the page with the edit summary because then when you open the course all these videos are connecting to YouTube um, they're not playing unless you hit play um, but it can take a little while for e uh, each video um, screen image like that to uh, generate so you can embed videos uh, I recommend though again if you have multiples that you use some of the other options and so some of the other places you can add videos so add activity or resource um, you can add a video to a book. A book is a great tool, when you click on this it also explains it, um, that provides you the ability to create multiple pages. Um, so you can um, create a book that has like five pages and each page has some information um, that could have text, images, graphics, videos, all within um, the same area. Um, so and they, they toggle through your page by page. They can also um, export books and download them to their um, computers if they want to review them. Um, but I'm going to use the page tool. Um, the page tool is um, just a single page. Um, I like to use that. Um, you can also do PDFs, uh, you know, but you could uh, put your syllabus in the page, um, which is a PolyLearn um, a textual um, space. Um, again, also allows you to add graphics, diagrams, video links, and so on. Um, so I have to give it a name. Um, say uh, I wanted them to learn how to use the quiz tool. So this is the title of it. I can provide a description. so this won't show up on the page the polylearn home page unless I check this box here um, otherwise when they look at resources they'll see this description I'll show you what I meant by that here's the content page content um, so if I'm going to embed a video I have to use the HTML editing source but I first need the embed code from YouTube so I'd go to YouTube I already have one open here we have a YouTube channel for polylearn support um, we have videos in, in that if you're interested. Um, they're all accessed through our PolyLearn support site. Uh, if I go to PolyLearn support, come over here on the right hand side it says videos. You can get to some of the main videos here, but you can also click on the video index and all the videos that we have are all on YouTube. Um, you can also watch them through this link here too. They're also um, linked to, to the support pages that they represent. Um, but if, say, I needed to embed this in my course, I'm going to scroll down here in the YouTube area and choose Share, and then Embed. And then this is the embed code. Um, if I click Show More, I can get, um, you know, size. So say I want it to be a certain size so it fits well in my class. Um, try not to put in too big of a size because um, not everybody has that large of a browser. Um, but if I copy this code here, so select it all, edit copy, and then go to my course in the HTML code. I'm going to paste, edit paste. Okay, so here's the um, code that will embed. Click update. Okay, there's my video. I'm just going to go ahead and save and return to class. Let me turn editing off just so you can get an idea what it looks like. Okay, it's, remember how we hid our um, blocks uh, in the previous um, video? I need to open this so I can actually see what's in it. Um, so here's the page. I can indent that um, just like I did these. Um, but if I click on it, it opens up a separate page. And then there's the video for the student to watch. So when they click play, okay has all the functionality, you know, you can expand it at full screen, you can go to YouTube and look at it. Uh, it when captioning is enabled, you can click on the CC and see the captions um, below. We do recommend that you caption your videos or use videos that have captioning in it. 
Um, it can be very helpful for students uh, with disabilities and students who might have learning disabilities as well. Um, so anyway, that's how you add a YouTube video into your course shell. A couple more things about your PolyLearn course which might help you uh, to speed things up as an instructor. Um, so let me show you some other things about uh, the layout. Uh, there's also in each block you have the ability to dock blocks. So if you don't really want to see all these blocks on the side um, and you want to uh, make it so that you have more visual real estate for your content, um, you can dock any of these blocks by just rolling over. So you can see if I click on that, it docks it to the corner, but then it's still available to me. So I can just dock these. Okay, and so now I've docked everything on the left hand side, and then I have more real estate for myself um, for my course. And when you dock blocks, though, you're docking them only for you. So when you access your PolyLearn course the next time, you're blocks will still be docked um, and can be accessed on the side of your browser. Um, but your students have to, if they choose to dock blocks, they would have to do that themselves. Um, and when you um, want to undock them, you roll over this little icon here, undock, and you can undock all of these again. So I did want to show you that. Um, again, uh, the tools that allow you to uh, minimize the um, content that shows. So if I go to edit settings, uh, if you don't expand all, you can also click on these little arrows and that will open these little areas of each item that you click on. Um, so if I wanted to show all content on the page, um, that's where I do that. Um, you might have also noticed in um, Franklin's class, he has these little boxes next to things. Okay, these little boxes are activity trackers. When you create an, uh, a, if you add a file or create an assignment, uh, quizzes, uh, anything that requires some type of action from the student, um, the ones that are dotted like this means that the PolyLearn system will actually check it for the student when they've done it. Uh, the ones that are solid, like this one, uh, means that you could check it after you've done whatever you want to do or what the instructor wants you to do with that file. Um, but the, these can be great visual cues so that the students can see, oh, I have to do something with this. Um, that's also in the edit settings. Um, so that's under completion tracking. So you would turn completion tracking on. So yes, let me go ahead and save changes. Okay, so um, I just expanded all my content blocks again so I could see everything. Um, the students can see everything on one page. And um, whenever I add something and turn completion tracking on, so let's turn on editing. So you have to turn it on in the edit settings and then you also have to, let me edit this page. You also have to turn it on in the actual area activity completion. So I want students to manually mark this or when they click on it I want PolyLearn to show that the activity was complete, completed. Um, so there's some options there. De again depending on um, the actual activity like quizzes you could say it only gets checked if they uh, receive an 80% or better. Um, you have more options to how you want to work that. Um, oh. Students can manually mark the activity as completed. Let's go ahead and do that one. Okay, and see now there's that checkbox. Let me go ahead and, and even though it might show that it's checked for you, um, that's your view, not the student's view. The students have to um, actually log in and look at it. And unfortunately, there's no way for you to see um, their checks, but when if it's an activity um, like an assignment, you'll know that they did something because there will be a file that's in the assignment area for that that they submitted. Um, you can also look at logs too if you want to know if they've accessed certain things. Um, there's a whole section here um, under reports 
that tells you everything that you want to know about what the students are doing in your class. Um, so the lastly, what I'd like to say about PolyLearn as this introduction video is um, make sure that you go to our support site. Everything I talked about today is on our support site. So the edit settings, uh, I talked about uh, adding files and um, labels, a page, um, embedding videos also in this multimedia section under embedding YouTube files. So the instructions are here. Um, everything you want to know about PolyLearn is available to you on our support site. Also, if you have any questions, please feel free to email us at polylearnsupport at calpoly.edu. You can also, let me go in the faculty section, you can also request a consultation if you feel that you need uh, some hands-on assistance uh, and you don't want to do this through email, go ahead and go to our consultation request form and fill this out and then someone will get back to you um, based on the dates and times you're available uh, and schedule an appointment so they can work with you face to face and help you with your particular questions. So I hope this was helpful for you and um, again uh, please email us at polylearnsupport at calpoly.edu and have a great day.